Hello, dear listeners, and welcome to our podcast, My Wife Hates Video Games. I'm your host, Travis Bone, more affectionately known as Finally He Sleeps Across the Interwebs. I'm a Gen X video game addict, beer enthusiast, and pop culture fanboy. Each episode, we'll talk movies, books, sci-fi, gaming, comics, tell some stories, laugh a little bit, and troll the world we're living in. Thanks for spending some time with me today. Now let's get down to business and see what's been going on since the last episode. It's been a little more than three weeks since I recorded the last episode. Um, honestly, I was hoping for like a two-week gap between recordings. It's We got Christmas coming. It's almost here. It's that time of year. And uh, it's just been busy. It's just been busy. And there's so much going on with everything that uh, I'm involved in. Not just all of this whole internet entertainment thing between like the podcast and content creation, YouTube, Twitch, all that kind of stuff. Uh, it's just everything else. Like real life has just kind of gotten in the way. I had I had expectations of what I was going to do. And I always, it's not that I bite off more than I can chew, but I bite off more than I can chew. I think I just have too many hats. You know, there. Talk about like okay, well, which hat do you have on today? I'm I'm wearing this hat. Am, am I uh, a, a dad or a coach or a comedian or you know what are we doing? And I I, th- I think I just I just have too many fucking hats. That's the problem. Uh, it's just it's just a lot of hats. You open the closet up and it's just fucking hats everywhere. That's uh, where I'm stuck at. It's just too much shit going on. So it's been three weeks since the last episode. I have a ton of stuff. I, when I start these episodes, I always have like a not a set list, but a map of where I kind of want to go, and it's just like a topic list. Basically, it's just like a set list of what random shit I'm gonna spew each week. It, it, you know, and it I start looking at it, and then about halfway through, I'm like, yeah, that, that'll wait. We'll we'll put that off till next week or. You know, then I'll go into some tangent and, uh, you know, half that shit gets cut out before it gets edited into a podcast. These are like three hour recordings of just me alone in front of a microphone rambling. And if you, I mean, if you can imagine that, that should tell you everything you need to know about me as, as far as what kind of a person I am. I can talk into the void to no one. For three hours straight. That's that's sad. That's that's really sad. And then I just look in the closet and there's just a bunch of fucking hats. <music> Quick movie recap. We'll, we'll start with this. this is like, that's what I have written down. That's my first topic. And uh, then there's a list of movies, which you guys don't care what my topic list looks like. But anyway, the first movie uh, that I want to talk about is Tomorrow War. It's been sitting on Amazon uh, Amazon Prime for months, and it's got Chris Pratt in it. And I look at Chris Pratt, and it, I mean, I love Guardians of the Galaxy. I, I've talked about it on you know past episodes. I absolutely love, 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 love Guardians of the Galaxy. I, I love James Gunn, so you, you put him involved in it, and it's fantastic. And Chris Pratt as Star Lord is epic. I mean, I love him. He's he's a fantastic character. And you know, Chris Pratt, you go back to like Parks and Rec and his characters, it's the same he plays the same character in everything he does. You just throw a new name on it. And a lot of times that doesn't bother me. Like but it doesn't mean I like the person. And Chris Pratt just annoys the shit out of me. As a person, I just every time I see a smug ass face, I just want to punch him. And it takes me a few minutes to get into it to where I can look past that. And there's a lot of actors that really can't act for shit, but they play the same character every time. And I like that character, even though I don't like him in real life. Like Tom Cruise, I I can watch anything with Tom Cruise in it almost. And I usually like what happens? I like where it goes, but I can't stand Tom Cruise. You know, Mel Gibson. God damn, that dude makes some great movies. But he is a total piece of shit. <laughs> there's no one on this. There's very few people on this planet like, yeah, 
I like Mel Gibson. I could sit down and have a beer with him. No, no, you can't. <laughs> Mel Gibson is a piece of shit, but I like his movies. Uh, you know, and then at the same time, there's like people who it doesn't matter what they're in. They play the same character, you know, but I still like their movies. Steven Seagal. Steven Seagal plays Steven Seagal in everything that has Steven Seagal in it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if he's fat, mumbling Steven Seagal, or he's old, 1990s, skinny, Nico Steven Seagal from, like, Above the Law and that kind of shit. I like him. I don't care. I, it, it doesn't even bother me if it's, it. you know, it, everything's in shadow and it's it's this big, dumpy guy. And you know that every time there's an action scene, it's some guy in a fat suit doing all the work. And then it cuts back to Stephen Gunn. You know, and they have to subtitle in. Or there's there's actual Steven Seagal movies. If you get on like, you know, Netflix or whatever, there are some Seagal movies that were made in Russia in the last ten years where he's he mumbles so bad that they have to have someone else dub in English over Seagal. Like, it's not even him talking. It's someone else talking because we get that Steven Seagal in all those movies. But doesn't matter. I still like Steven Seagal. Not as a person, but I watch his action movies for whatever reason. But for some, there's, there's just something about Chris Pratt that turns me off so much. And it's not even anything horrible. It's not like, you know, he's got like a basement full of you know guatemalan kids or something he's just an asshole i just don't like him <laughs> but i finally got around to watching tomorrow war despite the fact that it had smug ass chris pratt and god damn that movie was fantastic and it it sounded so good at my house so i had to crank the volume up and because of that, everybody here was like, oh, my God, he's fucking deaf. Why is the TV so goddamn loud? But it, it just sounded so good in the surround. And because of that, I had, I had to break it up into parts so I could only watch it when no one else was around. So it took me like three days to watch The Tomorrow War. Then I got done with it and was like, I want to watch this again. So I finally got a point where I could sit down and watch the entire movie all the way through. So I've watched it twice in a week. It's that good. And it might be there's there's a whole subplot with him and his daughter, and because I have a, a daughter who's roughly the same age as his daughter, and I don't know if that was what got me a little bit more. But great movie, Tomorrow War. Tomorrow War, even with Chris Pratt, it's it's worth the watch. Uh, still waiting on Ghostbusters. They finally released the streaming date for Ghostbusters Afterlife, and it's right after the first of the year. Can't wait for that. Plus, we have Matrix coming out in a couple of weeks. Uh, Matrix was it Resurrections, I think, which has put Keanu back in the limelight. Everybody's talking about Keanu. God, I love... See, Keanu Reeves plays Keanu Reeves in everything he's playing, whether it's... Uh, Bill and Ted or John Wick. It's just it's just a different version of the same person. You know, whoa. And then he shoots you in the head. That's Keanu Reeves. It doesn't matter. I love him in everything he's ever... I don't remember a single Kanunu movie that I didn't fall in love with. I love him in everything. He's just... He's just a genuine... I can't say enough good things about him, and I the John Wick series is is way up on the top of my list of movies and franchises. I just I just everything. Matrix is coming back. I rewatched all the originals with my daughter during you know last I think it was during the summer, and the first one still holds up. The first one still holds up. Plot. Uh, everything except for a few of the times the CGI goes in and it shows like Kanunu, uh, like bending over backwards and his body turns into rubber. It looks like an action figure, the, the old CGI from those dates. That's about the only time that it's, uh, that it, it looks very dated, but for the most part, that movie holds up. Then you get into the second one and the third one. And there are more holes in those movies than like a giant block of 40-year-old Swiss cheese. 
Uh, it's a little bit rough, but we let it go because it's the Matrix, and we, we, especially for me at my age, I grew up with that. Uh, that was like in, you know, my college days, and you know when I I was I spent I made time to go to the movies. I wasn't a kid where I thought everything was great. I actually had some opinions, and I still loved the the Matrix. Let's see what else. Watched Reminiscence, uh, which has. Wolverine, uh, Hugh Jackman, like the existing Wolverine, not the new one that supposedly it's we're gonna get. The the uh, rumor right now is that we get the gorilla from the Sing cartoons is gonna be the new Wolverine, uh, the Kingsman. Anyway, um, Egerton, is that his name? Something? It's not Nicole Egerton from Charles in Charge. It's uh, can't remember his name. Something Egerton. I don't know. I'm unimpressed because I love Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. And after Logan, I don't think I will ever be able to embrace another actor playing the part of Wolverine. Logan is next level. Just it's it's unbelievable. So it's it's gonna be tough. But it's Wolverine and Rebecca Ferguson. So hot. God, and anything with Rebecca Ferguson, I just immediately have to watch at least once or a hundred times and she's in it and she does not disappoint. The movie wasn't bad. It was a bit strange. Uh, it had uh, Tandy Newton was the other one in it. It was, it was decent. You know, it was another one of those movies that was, it's a pandemic movie. So it kind of went straight to uh, release in digital release. It's no tomorrow war, but it was worth watching anything with Rebecca Ferguson is worth watching. I went back to watch the Barn Identity series again, just just because, and it that movie. See, it's those are older films. There's certain things that I will go back and start over. There's books, like whole series of books that I will read all the way through to the new release, and then when the new release comes out, I'll go back to the beginning and read the entire series again. Uh, there, there's multiple series of books like that that have like 15, 20 books. So I'll spend three months reading the entire series again to prepare for the new release. Uh, it, you know, so that, that born identity is one of those ones I can go back, you know, every couple of years and watch all of them again. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I don't have an opinion on Matt Damon one way or the other. There's, there's times he's hilarious, but he, he became that whole series except for, um, when Hawkeye stepped in, in, in the one was it the Born Legacy? Is that what it is? The Born Legacy, with Hawkeye, something. The but the whole Born series coming back. The second one though is so out of. It, uh, the first one had Franca Patenti, the German actress who plays Marie in the first film. The first film was is by far the best, and she is. She's so good in it. Uh, she was in originally. She was in Run Lola Run, uh, where she played um, Mila Jovovich playing herself. It's such a strange. It there's. I saw the the, the poster for Run Lola Run for you know uh, I don't know years at you know like the video store and stuff, and I thought it was Mila Jovovich, and it turned out it was Franca Patenti. And, you know, then I got introduced to her with the Bourne series, and she's in the first one. And it, you know, it, it's kind of a standalone movie. And then they're like, well, this did so well. Let's make another one. Then they make the other one. And in the first, like, 15 minutes of the movie, Marie, Franca Patenti, she basically becomes John Wick's dog in the rest of the series. Uh, you know, they, they, they kill her right away. Um, it's The movie's... Old enough, I don't feel like I'm spoiling anything. But they kill her right away, and then the whole rest of the whole thing, he turns into John Wick, and he's just pissed because they killed his dog. But it's not a dog. It's Franca Patenti. Uh, so, uh, but again, I can watch that over and over and over again. That's, I can't, I, there's been other stuff, but those are the those are the big things I've watched in the last couple of weeks is the, the Bourne series and Tomorrow War and Reminiscence. Okay, speaking of Hawkeye in the one Bourne film, 
uh, that that's been the series that's been out for the last couple of weeks. And that has been fantastic. It's definitely not disappointing. It's on Disney plus we talked about, uh, what if, and the adventures of Sam and Bucky, which is the only time I've ever, that, that's it. The, the series is the adventures of Sam and Bucky for me. It's Falcon and the winter soldiers. It's a terrible title. It should have been the adventures of Sam and Bucky. Those were all in the last episode, but this, it's the same kind of thing. It's, I love the series that they're putting out on Disney Plus. They're very mature. That's the best way I can describe them. The, the plot lines are next level. The, the Marvel films are very action first, merchandise second, plot third. That's, that's how they get released. It's, it, it's very money driven. If we, if, if there's a way to kind of like, you know, settle it. It's the Marvel films are very money driven. The series on Disney though, all of them are plot first. Now I'm talking Marvel. I'm not talking like the Mandalorian and stuff, but the Disney series for Marvel are plot first uh, by far. And then, you know, then, then action, then merchandising. Even if I don't even think they're, they're pushing merchandising at all for the Marvel series. Uh, you know, Loki might be a little bit, it, it was, it deviated from that, but the, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, the Adventures of Sam and Bucky, and, well, What If, and by far Hawkeye are plot first by far. I, I, I love it. It's very cerebral things. Everything, it, it ties into the blip. Uh, which is the whole, you know, when Thanos clicked his fingers and everybody disappeared for five years or whatever it was. That, everything is kind of tying into that and it brings in all of the aspects of what happened when all of these people disappeared. In Sam and Bucky, they talk about, like, you know, when he, Sam comes back and he doesn't have any credit and he can't get a loan because he hasn't worked for five years. It's that kind of stuff. That you're, you know, it's going to go over the anybody under the age of 10's head. But for an adult watching it, they're like, damn, I never even thought about that. That it, it's that kind of stuff. It's real small things that aren't humorous. They're, they're really just thought provoking. Like someone spent the time to really look. And then in this one, it, it's the same kind of thing. It's, it's, you know, it really looks at how Hawkeye is an anti-hero, and they really address just some of the dark shit he did and does. You know, it, you know, he he was basically an assassin, and Black Widow's an assassin, and that kind of you know they 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 became Avengers. But there's there's multiple lines in the series where they're like, no, they're not heroes. Look at all the shit that they did. How many people have they killed through? And they they kind of take that into you know into um, account, which I really like. It's you know you have like the Venom film, which that's another one. I, I can't remember if I talked about that in the last episode or not, but do, you know the Venom, the last movie with Woody Harrelson, that the you know it's it's a little bit too cuddly for what it is. Venom's supposed to be a really dark antihero, and I love those movies. But they don't, they don't give it enough credit. It's a little bit too fluffy for it to be what it should be, or is is for it to be as dark as it could be. But in the series on Disney Plus, they seem to go there a little bit more readily with how dark it is. Uh, the there's a couple aspects in the whole series that are that really have people talking. There's this Rolex watch that they're trying to figure out who it belongs to. Um, and it, you know, there's all this speculation, especially if you talk about it or, you know, with anybody that understands it or r read about it online, there's, there's like five different things that the, the Rolex could, um, could signify. I think my, my final definition of the Rolex is it's, I think it is, um, Hawkeye's it's Barton's watch and I think his wife gave it to him 
and there's some kind of engraving on it that explains and I think they're going to they're going to come out that she's an agent of shield which would make sense how she's so okay with it which that's the only part like in the very beginning I started watching this series and I'm like eh, this is bullshit cuz every time he calls his wife she's so understanding it's you know it's Thelma from Scooby Doo and he's talking to her on the phone and he's like, hey, I, you know, hey, babe, sorry, I'm not going to be there for Christmas. I got to go kill a bunch of people. And she's like, you know, that's fine. Whatever. It's your job. Blah, blah, blah. Nobody's wife is that understanding. And that that's the only <laughs> bullshit part of it. And if they don't come back that this Rolex explains how she's a shield agent and a superhero, too, which explains how she speaks Russian and knows about, like, the tracksuit mafia and everything, that is the only thing that is bothering me about this series. And if they don't come back and explain it through that way, I'm going to be pissed. But I think she it's going to come out that the reason she's okay with all this is because she's a retired superhero taking care of the kids, and she understands. And that's why she understands. Otherwise, total bullshit. No one's wife on the planet is that understanding. Yeah, sorry I can't make Christmas. Got to kill a bunch of rough and Russian mafia guys. Yeah, it's fine, honey. Do your thing. You do you. I got the kids. Doesn't work that way in real life. Okay, I talked earlier about there being book series I can read over and over again whenever a new, a new book in the series is released. One of those is the Jack Reacher series by Lee Child. I've went through that entire book series at least five or six times. And reread them over and over again. Uh, I've even I even read all of the Diane Capri Hunt for Jack Reacher series. They're not nearly as good, but it's it's a different. It's interesting. So if if you're familiar with Jack Reacher at all, the series is about this retired military uh, police officer, investigator, special special units investigator who grew up outside of the United States on army bases. And he's just this big brute of a guy. And he, he gets discharged from the army after spending all these years as an investigator. He's a major in the army. And when he finally retires, he comes to the United States for the first time. He had never been to the U S before, even though he was a citizen because he had been born abroad into a military family and then took on a military life. So he comes to the United States and he has all of this money because of he worked all those years, but he had nothing to spend it on. So he has like a stockpile of cash, but no home and no worldly possessions. He has nothing and he just roams the countryside hitchhiking across the country just to see the his there's lines in the books where he always says um, when he explains it to somebody what he's doing he's like I'm I just want to see the entire country that I've spent my whole life you know trying to protect so he just hitchhikes from place to place for no reason and and just gets into situations kind of reminds me of the old TV show that they redid. They've done it. They've redone it a couple of times. It originally, I think it had, if I remember right, it was Michael Caine, and the series was The Equalizer. It's just this guy who basically helps people, and they redid it as a film. It was Denzel Washington. Now they've got a new one. The Equalizer is now like Queen Latifah, I think. But that series kind of reminds me of what this book is based on. It's like The Equalizer and The A Team put together into one person and it's Jack Reacher. Love the books. They're they're so over the top. He's so violent and he just doesn't care. And he always gets away with it. And you, you read the book and you're like there's a part of your brain that's like, this isn't this isn't right. This guy is just killing people and maiming them and, you know, twisting knees the wrong way. That guy's never gonna walk right again. And he's just like a third level henchman. But you just you let that stuff go because it is what it is. But morally, the books, woo, they're they're a bit out there. It doesn't matter. I love them anyway. It's just like it's just an action book, like personal vice. It, it, the Jack Reacher series. They released two movies 
uh, in the series, and they both had Tom Cruise, and we've already discussed earlier that I will watch anything that has Tom Cruise in it, despite the fact that he's this crazy little creepo in real life. But in the movies, okay, so Jack is supposed to be like six foot eight, 280 pounds. He's just this monstrous guy with like oven mitts for hands. And like, he's, he's basically Shaquille O'Neal that roams the countryside and he just looks unkempt because he lives in hotel rooms and he never, he doesn't have an, he doesn't have a suitcase or anything. He just, the only thing he has is a passport, a debit card and a toothbrush. That's it. That's all he carries with him. Those three things. And he'll get cash out when he needs it. And he brushes his teeth. And when his clothes get dirty, he buys new clothes. That's, that's the way this guy lives. So, you know, they, they talk about how he's just this scary looking guy, not only because he's so big, but because he's just, he's like Bobo from the Bigfoot series, but, you know, he's hitchhiking across the country. Then they put Tom Cruise in him in the movies, who's like five foot one with like four inch platform shoes. I, I, I swear to God, he's like, he's the white version of Kevin Hart, but no one talks about it because he's, you know, he, he tries to be as, big as he can be and there's nothing about him anybody who loved the book series there's nothing when they when they said they were making a movie and I was like yes like Tom Cruise is playing him and I'm like no how how is that gonna work it's okay but they miss that entire portion of him being huge the movies are okay but that's uh, you know and the second one had Kobe Smulders in it which I mean come on Wow. Uh, it, you know, it makes sense, but uh, they're going to make a series there. I mean, they're not going to, they have made a series that is going to be on Amazon. It starts in 2022. It is going to be epic because it goes back to book one. The first of the two movies is based off of the book one shot, which is a good book, but it's the ninth book in the series. Then the second movie was called Never Go Back, which is based off of the book Never Go Back, which is the 18th book in the series. So it's all they did was take those two stories across the whole genre of Jack Reacher stuff and then pick them out and made movies based on them. They kind of tie together, but not really. Now, the way they're doing the Amazon series is they went back to the very first book, the very first book, and they're making the series based on that. And it's called Reacher, The Killing Floor. The Killing Floor was the name of the original book. And it's going to be, the expectation is, as long as the, the series does well, they can move through the whole book series with each season being a new book. That's the speculation, but... Richson, it's played by Alan Richson, and he's a giant guy. He looks exactly what you would expect Jack Reacher to be if you've if you've read the books. And so finally, Alan Richman versus Tom Cruise is spectacular. It's it's like if the character was supposed to be Sha- Shaquille O'Neal, and they gave you Kevin Car- Hart. That's that's how pissed most of us were. Not that Tom Cruise did bad, but it's just not the same thing. So with Richson playing Reacher, it's it's got all of us really, really excited. And if you don't know who Alan Richson is, uh, the only thing that most people know him from is he was Hawk in uh, the Titans TV series that's on HBO Max based on like the Teen Titans, uh, another Marvel you know, not Teen Titans Go, the cartoon, which is fantastic, but just the Teen Titans. And it, I haven't watched it at all. I don't know what it is. I mean, I, I've never seen any of the episodes of Titans. I just haven't gotten into it yet. But I know he's in it as Hawk. So he's, you know, moving into a new a new genre character. But this looks perfect. Uh, so I'm excited about that. That comes after the first of the year. After Jack Reacher, we also have a bunch of other stuff coming out uh, soon that I'm really excited about. We have the book of Boba Fett, which is finally getting released, and it looks interesting. 
I, I love the Mandalorian, but again, it's not anything like the Marvel series. It's it's very it's Star Wars. It's it's very Star Wars. And we have the Book of Boba Fett, which doesn't look any different. It, it looks like it's just another realm of the Star Wars canon, which I love Star Wars, so I'm not complaining about it. But it's not going to be a cerebral, like, oh, my God. No, it's just going to be straight up more Star Wars, which is a good thing. But it is. Uh, the Book of Boba Fett. We also have Obi-Wan Kenobi. The, the story of Obi-Wan Kenobi, which is going back. Uh, it's, you know, Ethan's coming. or No, Ewan McGregor is coming back in it. And Christian, oh God, it's, you know, the, he, he was such a terrible actor in the prequels that bothers me that they're bringing him back as Darth Vader. Cause I hated him in those movies. He was such a whiny little bitch and they, they wanted you to kind of understand Darth Vader but they made him so annoying and whiny. I mean, I, I don't think they wanted you to like Darth Vader, but George Lucas's casting of him and the way he is portrayed in the movies, it it gave zero, zero likability to a character that a lot of people really wanted to understand and like. That... More so than Jar Jar Binks, I think the casting of him as Darth Vader ruined the prequels for me. It was the worst choice possible. And unfortunately, they are bringing him back for the, the Obi-Wan Kenobi series. I, it is what it is. Uh, I'm excited about it, though. It's supposed to be the story of the time before Ewan McGregor turned into... Guinness, it's it's that uh, you know the, between the last prequel and the original Star Wars before he turns into old Ben, it's where he's protecting him. That's that's kind of what it's supposed to be. The Peacemaker, yes, James Gunn's series, The Peacemaker, is coming soon. That's coming a lot quicker than I expected. That's John Cena as Chrome Faced, The Peacemaker. From the Suicide Squad sequel, James Gunn's sequel to the Suicide Squad, which I talked about in previous episodes, was fantastic. And John Cena as the Peacemaker is is, is perfect. It is so... just It's the perfect character for him, and they've got that whole series coming out. It's going to be on HBO Max. That's supposed to be released, I think it's after the first of the year. It's like January, February, the Peacemaker's coming out. It's the origin story of how John Cena became the Peacemaker, and I cannot wait for that. And then obviously Matrix Revolution and Resurrections? Something. It's the, the Matrix sequel. I can't remember the name of it. It's just, it's Kanunu's new film. And obviously Ghostbusters Afterlife. I cannot wait for the first of the year. I think the first one is Book of Boba Fett, which is December 29th. Which gives us something to go because I think Hawkeye's ending in like two weeks. It'll be done right before right before Christmas, and then the next week, Book of Boba Fett comes out. A lot of a lot of stuff in the pipeline coming up. Now the next thing I want to talk about is Game of Thrones, and this was a topic that I kind of pushed back from the last episode, and it's it's just it's it's like so much to talk about. Because I watched the entire series while I was on break from the podcast. So there's so much I want to talk about. Because I did, I binged the entire series like back to back. And I have such unpopular opinions about this. Because I hated some of the characters everybody loved. I loved some of the characters everybody hated. And I, everybody watched it week to week. But with me watching the entire thing all at one time, I didn't get that gap between seasons in between weeks to where I could go to the water cooler at the office and chat about it with everybody. And then their opinions would reflect my opinions. And, I, you know, you forget things from season to season. And, you know, it's like a character that you don't really like in this episode. After a week, you kind of forget kind of the shit they did. 
and it's it's a little different, but I kind I I kind of want to talk about the whole Game of Thrones series, but I think that might just be an entire episode to itself. I swore up and down I was going to do that this week, but God, it would be it would be I, I seriously I could talk about the whole Game of Thrones series for an hour, so I think I'm going yeah we're gonna save it. We're going to save it for a special episode of the podcast. We'll just do a Game of Thrones episode of the podcast that like six people will listen to because it's so far dated. It's way back. And, it, you know, I'm the only person that waited this long to watch Game of Thrones. But we're going to skip it. We're going to skip it for this episode. We'll come back to it. We will come back to it. Maybe maybe the next episode. We'll we'll do one more before the end of the season and or the end of the year, and it will be the Game of Thrones episode. That'll all be all talking about. That's it. Just Game of Thrones. Twenty twenty one is almost over, and there's there's just been a lot of stuff that happened this year as far as like my presence on the internet and content creation and everything. And one of the things that I, I, you know, because we took all this break off of my wife hates video games, uh, I didn't get to talk about it at all. But my favorite thing I did in all of 2021 was the attempt to create a new trolling series on YouTube that I I called the Cringeworthy series. Uh, It never took off. Uh, It was so much work, and it 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 was it was a like a passion project. It's like when Joaquin Phoenix decided he was going to be a rapper, it, you know, and and everybody's like, no, no, you're not. No. Why? But it was just something he wanted to do. And this was, this is my Joaquin Phoenix rap moment, uh, for, for 2021. And if you didn't know that it's true, you need to look that up and, and check it out. Yes. Joaquin Phoenix wanted to be a rapper. But anyway, so if you were to break down my personality and, like, describe me in in one sentence, there would have to be a part of that that says, I'm I'm a troll. I make fun of everything. I'm a cynical person. I'm a pessimistic person. And I enjoy ragging on everything. I have much more... I can talk at length about stuff that I like, but it's, I'll even make fun of shit that I like during the moment that I'm talking about it. Like if there's something that I really enjoy, I'm, there's going to be moments where I'm making fun of it during the time I'm talking about it because I just, that's just part of me. And this is an extension of that. I love to make fun of shit. And the, the, I, my oldest son who's 20 now was was talk, we were talking about YouTube and like where it was going for the year, and I, I was I struggled this year to to grow. I struggled to grow, and we were trying to figure out what were some ways I could branch out and and kind of grab some new audience. And he's like, "You need to to get into just making fun of shit because that's what you do. You should try this." He showed me a few different things, and he's like, "See, this is my favorite video on the internet. You need to do this." And I, I was like, "You know what?" We'll give it a try. It's, you know, he loves Cody Ko, and I like Cody Ko. And that, that's what Cody Ko's known for. I'm, that's all I do. I thought, let's let's give it a try. Let's try to make some cringe videos, just, you know, reactionary videos and see what it does. So I started looking on the internet, on YouTube, for some stuff that I could easily make fun of. And I happened along a YouTube channel that is nothing more than dating tips for douchebags. And it was so horrible and hilarious that it just, like the the cringe videos wrote themselves because the guy that makes this shit is so just stereotypical and awful, but yet there's millions of people that watch these videos. It is the worst series about picking up women it is awful, awful, awful. And that's what I was watching. That's what the cringeworthy videos started out with. Just me watching these videos and making fun of this guy who was talking about picking up women. And there's a very small 
very small audience for what I did. And the people that did watch those videos still comment on those videos. It, it's like an inside joke now, but I could not get anybody to watch them. It didn't take off at all. I, I would still love to come back to it later down the road because I, it was, it was by far the most fun I've had in all of 2020, 2021 was making those cringeworthy videos. And we started out with like dating tips for douchebags was the videos that we went to. Then it went into self-help videos. These guys that made these videos about how to pick up women or how not to be the creepy guy at the bar, that kind of stuff. And then I found a series that was about, um, it was some woman who she was like this brunette therapist whose credentials were suspect at best. Uh, she spent the entire videos attempting to be sexy and like flirting with her target audience, but her target audience was like housewives. It's really weird. And there was a video she put out about top 10 signs that your husband is addicted to porn. And it was, it was hilarious. And I did that one, but then my the whole series got tagged and they were red flagged by YouTube. They, they lost their monetization because I had pornography in the title and it, you know, then I had to go I was struggling with that. I made another episode that I found another guy who was a recovering porn addict and has this whole series on YouTube about how to beat a porn addiction. And I recorded an episode for that. And after the whole dealing with the red flag by YouTube over the husband of being addicted to porn, that one I saw, I can't even, there's no way I would get it. I mean, some of the shit he talked about was that once you're addicted to porn, some of the things you did that, you know, to help you get over was you had to have a spotter. Like that's what he talked about. Like you have to have someone that whenever you want to watch porn, you can call them so they can talk you down. If you have a friend that you can call and be like, Oh, Joe, I'm, I'm about to turn on some Pornhub. That is the best friend on the planet because I have a lot of friends. Believe it or not, I do have some friends. And there's not a single one that I could call and say, dude, I'm about to turn on Pornhub. He'd be like, dude, turn it on. Every single one of them would have been like, do it. Do it. Get rid of the blue balls because my friends are awful. There's, I can't, no guy has a friend who's like, yes, Jeff. Turn, turn the computer off, step away, get your Bible out. Don't do it. The, the episode was, was one of the funniest ever, but I never released it because I'd already been red tagged for having pornography. There was no porn in the video, but it, it had porn in the title and that killed the whole channel. It was, it was a, a lot of fun. God, I can't. So that's my new goal. I, originally, I, I started doing all this stuff because it's like, okay, I, I play a lot of video games. Um, I, I can't do stand-up comedy anymore. We've got, there's just too much shit. I'm too busy. I can't travel. Let's let's get into the internet. Let's start doing some YouTube stuff and things like that so I can kind of have an outlet. And that was my goal. Like, hey, eventually someday this could be a part-time job. It, not a full-time job, but a part-time job that would bring in enough revenue that I I could m all this time was worth it. Uh, that was my eventual goal. Now that goal has changed to the point where it's not about the money. It's about having enough subscribers that eventually someday I can do the cringeworthy series full time and make enough money just on that, that justifies me doing what I want you know, They say. You know, if you do what you love, you never work a day in your life. Cringeworthy is what I love. And if I could do that and actually make a little bit of money just to justify the amount of time that it takes, it would be worth it. That is my goal to eventually come back to that series and it, you know, I, I can just push it. It's like when you have somebody like, I think it was Madonna that made a children's book and people were like, oh, it's Madonna. She made a children's book. That is the only reason I would ever sing Like a Virgin was to eventually make a children's book. This is going to be my children's book. Being able to make, that's that's so weird, but yes, this is my Madonna children's book, being able to make fun of people who talk about porn addictions on the internet. That is, my cringeworthy series is my whole thing. I did, I don't remember how many episodes I did. I did a lot, and they just got 
worse as it went along as far as no, when I say worse is as far as how many people watch them. And then it turned into I was I did one on video game ads. Then I started to try to tie it into the the whole video games. And I did there's this terrible game on mobile called Episodes, which it's oh god, it's awful. And all of their ads are so clickbaity and it's all about like lesbian this and it's it's it, this is awful. And I did a I did a live stream on Twitch where we played episodes to try it out. And that be that ended up becoming one of the cringeworthy videos. And I thought if if I could do anything that would grab an audience from what I already have in the video game side and move them over to this, that would be it. And it, it never took off. It was awful. It was awful. Such a giant waste of time. But again, my favorite thing from 2021, unfortunately. I need to address this just because, I mean, I don't want to get into it too much, but it's something that I feel like I need to address here. Uh, I'm assuming most of the people listening now to the podcast know me from the FIFA mobile community. This is a game that I've played uh, over the last five years, six years. Uh, it's where I got my start in content creation. Uh, the the website, uh, the, the YouTube channel, everything, even the, the podcast all built off of the the FIFA mobile the game, the community, that's where the majority of my videos and posts and everything, all the audience that I've built in the last few years started with this, uh, like Twitter and all that. That's, that's from years and years and years ago. That's, that's a completely different thing, but YouTube is all been, it's, it's started from FIFA mobile. That's where all the Twitch streaming and everything came from. They released a beta for the new version, the season six, it's the, the FIFA Mobile 22 that's coming out. And it's this is a mobile game based on the console version that is a huge, you know, worldwide phenomena. There's so many people that play it, so many content creators in the console, but in the mobile, there's not near as many. I mean, it's still big, you know, millions of people, but it's not as big as the console game and over the last couple of years I've worked my way into one of a handful of people that are well known in the community as being one of the content pre creators and it when the, the beta was released and we saw it I, I wasn't as concerned in the beginning about like oh my god I'm gonna lose all my subscribers all of my you know no one's gonna watch me anymore because this is so different because I know that no matter what it is I can probably find a way to to work my way into it and manipulate it to a in a way that I can find an advantage that nobody else is going to find or I can find an advantage that no one else is willing to do to to keep my subscribers and my audience so I'm not worried about that but I am worried about what it's going to do to the game because it is so <sighs> What they've done is there's a Asian version that uh, was built by a company called Nexon that is it's Asian market, okay, and the the rest of the world we're talking the same game is used everywhere else in the world except for this tiny little Asian market, and there's all this other stuff in this game for the Asian market that they wanted to bring to the global game. So instead of just picking and choosing what they wanted from that one, they copy and pasted it into the global version. But here's the problem. The, the really tiny Asian market version is developed for... I, I'm going to say this, and it's going to sound bad, but I at this point I don't even care. It's developed for a... This you know it's a community culture. There, it's not like the rest of the world. It is definitely not like you know North America, uh, specifically, um, the United States, Mexico, South America. We are very much the exact opposite. We are. I am grown up in capitalism, and any way I can make a dollar, I'm gonna make a dollar. That's the difference. You know, and they think as a game, 
as a manufacturer of a game, as a developer, they think that, that that's how the rest of the world thinks. And when you build something based on that and you're like, well, it works there. Yeah, sure, it works there. Because they don't think the way the rest of the world thinks. They don't think the way the, that we think. We want an ability to do it. So they've, they've put this together and there is a giant portion of the community that is able to see the forest for the trees and sees all of the problems that are going to be coming in all of 2022. And it could very well destroy something that I have been in love with and spent thousands of hours not only just playing. I mean, it's a, it's a video game, but my entire like I have a full time job, a part time job, and I'm a content creator. I use this as a a big portion of my livelihood. This does put food on the table for my family. Everything that I do, this video game has given me a, a source of income. So there's that portion of it that I'm like, you're taking money out of my pocket, which is bad. But at the same time, I feel like this is, it's, it's just something that is so close to me because it is what it is. And I know it's just a video game. Again, like you say, you know, the podcast called My Wife Hates Video Games. She has no understanding of this. But it, it's so, oh God, it's, it's, it's been a bad couple of months because of this. You know, there's, there's a lot of times I look at things and it's like with the vaccines. When you see people and they have these arguments about like, I don't want to get vaccinated because, you know, the vaccines are full of microchips that the government can track me. And you look at that person and you're like, you're not that fucking stupid. No one is that fucking stupid. But yet people are that fucking stupid. Siri, they're, they're that stupid. And I see these arguments that these people have. They're like, the government's not going to tell me what to do. Yeah, well, do you put a seatbelt on when you get in a car? Because that's a fucking rule too. They're just so ignorant. And I, it frustrates me to the point where all of my, you know, not not OCD, but like my, my spectrum kicks in, let's just say that, uh, where I just, I cannot, I cannot handle the stupidity of others in certain situations. Like I, I, I embrace it sometimes and enjoy it because I find entertainment in it. But when you have arguments with these people who, you know, they, they can't see and you know, they just, they're just that their naivete, their gullibility is is through the roof it it puts me on edge i i go into like my anxiety kicks up like i just cannot handle dealing with it and the, the whole pandemic has had me in this constant state of upheaval where i'm on the verge of just lashing out at all times it's been it's been a tough couple of years mentally because of it and and now this is just like the icing on the cake and it's dumb i'm i'm smart enough to step back and look and go it's just a video game why do you let that shit bother you so much but god damn it it fucking bothers me that much just because i'm i feel like i'm surrounded by morons half of the time and it, it's not getting any better there, there is, I feel like over the last month, I've been able to, with my constant ranting over it, I've been able to turn a few people, you know, inf influential people in a positive direction and people are listening and there are changes coming and I, I've, I'm, I'm positive that my platform of being one of a handful of influencers in this market has had a positive effect on that. Whether or not it will be a a strong enough positive effect for it to change things, I don't know. And, but I'm but I'm god damn I'm working hard on it. And it's as dumb as it is, it's just a video game. It's just a video game. But fuck I don't give a shit. It's important to me. It's important to me. I don't I probably should I'll probably cut this out of the podcast because it, it literally makes me sound like a lunatic but 
Fucking Jesus. It's, yeah. I'm tired. I'm tired. Since this, since the whole pandemic has started, since, honestly, since Donald Trump and between the Trump and Boris taking over, it, I feel like I'm surrounded by people who have always been able, you know, they've always been forced to keep their crazy in check and stamped down and closeted. But all of their hate and racism and misogyny and bigotry, all of that, that they've always had it. And you can look at people and you're like, yeah, 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 yeah. But now all of a sudden they feel like it's, it's okay to, to let it out, to let their crazy flag fly. And the last few years, last like four years, it's just, it's gotten worse and worse and worse. And it's resulted in where we're at as a, as a, as a population, not just as a country, but as a world population where conspiracy theories and you know just hate and bigotry and misogyny and everything is it's so it's just a trope of everyday life that we can't make fun of it anymore because it's not it's not funny anymore like I loved Andrew Dice Clay in the 90s and the shit that he said was awful it was awful but it was funny because it was so awful you can't like we went we went through a range of mo- emotions where it was like it was it was funny because it was oh, that's so wrong you can't say that then it got to the point where it's like well you can't say that because it's wrong and now we're yeah you can say that because everybody says it and 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 we're really close to the point where people are about to elect Andrew Dice Clay for Congress here in the United States that's that's where we've come as as a as a planet to the point where Howard Stern is now talking about a presidential run and you you hear people discussing it and they're actually considering it like mm, I don't know he does have some good ideas that's how crazy shit has developed and uh, because of that stuff like this video game it's just it's just too much like I can't I can't handle all of it, and it, you know, then this is like a tipping point for me. Again, I'll probably delete this. I, I, I'm gonna, I'll probably delete this. But this is, it's, it's been. It's like I've had such highs over the last few years, and then lows, and uh, I don't know. I don't know. Let's talk about something a little bit more fun. Uh, the there's a game out. We're talking about games. There is a a computer game slash mobile game called Raid Shadow Legends. It's been kind of a uh, how, do I say, how do I say this? It's I really I, I can't I can't think of a good way to describe this. It is the twilight of video games. Okay. So Twilight had a massive following of people, uh, you know, but if you weren't a 13 or 14 year old girl, you couldn't say that you liked the Twilight series. You had all these like 20 something women, you know, 35 year old women who were big into the Twilight series. You had guys that were reading the books because they had vampires and werewolves in it, but you, you couldn't say that you liked it because it was Twilight. And it wasn't good. It was bad. We can all agree that it was bad. But, you know, millions of people bought that shit. And it, it, you, you couldn't, you you know, people were reading it. You know, people loved it. But there was a stigma with it. Raid Shadow Legends is the Twilight version of video games. Because there are millions and millions and millions of people have downloaded it, played it, and everything. But nobody wants to talk about it. It is the moped of video games. They, Plarium, the company that does it, they uh, invited content creators to do a challenge so that you could, you know, they wanted you to play it. You wanted you to stream it to your audience. And it was like a week-long campaign. So a few months ago, 
I was like, I'll do it. There, there wasn't much anything going on. I had never played the game before. So I downloaded it and I did a week long campaign trying to get people to play it. It immediately became something that I knew. Like it's, it's like heroin and crack cocaine on a cheeseburger. It is, it is that addictive. And I knew immediately, Oh shit, this thing is going to, is going to suck my time dry. It's, like softcore lingerie models in high heels fighting monsters. And it, 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 the, the, the sexiness appeal of it, the, the cleavage and boobs, there's just so much cleavage boobs everywhere. Everyone's in high heels. It appeals to every 14 year old boy in all of us. There's no way that it, it, it's, Oh, God, it's so clickbaity on top of it, but it's got everything that, uh, you know, a lot of us love in games. It's all about farming, farming characters, farming coins, farming gear. They're so, so involved, so much different stuff. And again, like I said, there's boobs everywhere. It's all about tits, cleavage, 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 ass, 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 everyone in high heels and thongs and it, it, it oh, it's so addictive. Um, I did that. It, the, I, did, I ran the week long campaign and the, the, the money that Plarium paid the company played the content creators who did it for a week was nuts. Like the amount of money that was available for anybody that was willing to play it and stream it was crazy. And not only the fact that I, I fell in love with the game, but I was like, holy shit, there's so much money in this. If I can continue to play this and get paid to play it, I'm going to play this game. This is going to be my new thing. The campaign ended and I started to look at where I was earning revenue from the actual content that I created, like the streams and the videos and everything. And it worked out that I actually lost money creating the videos because I, I mean, I made money from Plarium. But as far as everything else goes, I lost subscribers. I lost viewers. The The videos actually hurt the revenue I was making on everything else. Like stacked videos, stuff from times ago, the, the, my views dropped because people were so against me playing this game that it... it I don't even know if it was a positive. I was like, oh, I, I, I'll just keep playing it again. It was... You know, I, I just put it in, in my phone and didn't talk about it, but I was I was playing it every day. And then I, I, another another campaign opportunity came up, and they're like, you can play it for another week and make some more money. And I'm thinking, well, there's nothing else going on. Let's just try it again. So I did a second week-long campaign, made a shit ton of money based on it. Uh, the amount of time and effort I put into that for a week was the equivalent of a month in any other game in just a week ran another successful campaign. And again, a week after it was done, I took a major hit in subscribers and everything. So, I mean, that's how much people hate this game and you know, people are playing it because it does have all of the positives that become behind it. And all of the creators are making a ton of money on it. So I'm, I'm really torn as far as how I want to handle this because I'm, I'm still playing it constantly. In fact, right now, I swear to God, right now my phone is open and I am playing the game while I'm recording this. <laughs> I'm recording this. Uh, it's, it's basically Dungeons and Dragons with thongs and enough cleavage to hide a full D4 to D27 piece die set. Uh, unless you're, you know, you grew up GURPS. Uh, then you, you, you're not going to get that joke. Actually, not GURPS, because GURPS use six-sided die. So if you grew up with traditional D&D, you have no idea what I'm talking about for a D4 to D20 seven-piece die set, which I remember asking for for Christmas a few times and having relatives go, oh, my God, is he a devil worshiper? Um, or if you're under 25, you probably won't get any of this because if you hear role-playing game, you're probably thinking more about your girlfriend dressing up like a nurse or a Catholic schoolgirl, which is a completely different episode for a dozen different reasons. But, you know, the, it's the it's the Dungeons & Dragons made into video games. It's that 
with a lot of boobs and a lot of cleavage and ass and thongs and high heels and ah, it's so addictive. Uh, trying to pick up another game as well. UFC uh, is there's a new UFC mobile game. I'm, I'm not that into MMA. It's a little too homoerotic for me. I can't stand when somebody jumps on somebody else and they're in their underwear. They put their balls in the next guy's face and then they start hitting him with the back of their hand like they're hammering pie dough. It's, there's, there's nothing about that that is any kind of fighting that I ever grew up with. I am a boxing guy through and through. The sweet science of boxing. MMA is the exact opposite. It is, it, it, I have... Everything about me looks at it. It's like it is girl fighting. Like it, it's a step away from pulling hair. Like you do. If I'm in a fight with somebody, you do not kick them. You punch them. You use your fists. You don't use your hands. You, you never slap somebody open face. You know, you don't use the back of your hand. Everything about that is just like if some, if I'm, you know, growing up, if I got into a, a bar fight with somebody and they tried to kick me, everyone around Every person in that bar would start laughing their ass off like, dude, just tried to kick him. That's it's just it's not it's it's a generational thing. And I've never really been into MMA. I've watched it. I've tried to get into it from time to time. The only thing I can watch is girls fight, but that's a completely different thing. In fact, you were talking about boobs and thongs and a video game that, you know, addicted. So obviously I, I have no problem with girls fighting MMA. But anyway, there's this new UFC game that came out, and since we haven't had any good boxing games for a long time, I thought, I'm going to try this. It's actually pretty decent. It's good. I like the game. I've been playing it, and I've been pushing to get myself in the door for their new release of the game to become it, it, it to give me a chance to, to be one of the content creators that can influence that game since it's new. And it's finally made its way where I've been allowed to play the beta and been invited into their creator, like their, their realm of creators. I don't know. Uh, they've trusted me enough to get my foot in the door there. So I'm, I'm hoping that comes into, I honestly, I don't even know how I'm going to swing three full-time games in 2022 between FIFA mobile. If it survives uh, raid, if people don't continue to hate me for even playing it and UFC, if I don't hate myself for playing it, um, it's going to be an interesting year for streaming and content creation next year. So we'll see. We'll see. <music> going to end the episode with some story time. Uh, I, I Normally I, I usually tell, you know, some old stories about shit that happened years ago. Stuff that, you know, like old stories, drinking stories, that kind of stuff. But I... I you know, and I, I had some notes. Like something will happen on Twitch. We'll, have, we'll tell a story. I, I do a lot of late night drinking streams where I get drunk on stream playing a video game with people and usually some crazy shit happens and some stories come out and I'm like and then I get off the stream and I'm like oh my god did I actually just say that on on Twitch yes I did uh, and, I, and then I take a note on I'm like that would be a good story for the podcast like a, you know I talked to an entire episode or a, a Twitch stream we, we were discussing blender wine uh, how I'm one of my go-to drinks is you buy a cheap bottle of wine from the gas station for like $6. You put the whole bottle in a blender and you aerate it by turning the blender on for like 20 seconds. And then you dump that entire bottle into a big ass glass. And that is a $7 night of wonderfulness. Uh, I had an entire stream talking about that. And then a friend of mine who years ago showed up at my house with a box of tampons and a bottle of vodka trying to get everybody to to shove vodka tampons up their ass before we went to the bar because it was going to save us money. That was the the stories that I was going to talk about tonight, but some recent shit happened with my family, uh, my mom and my dad, that I want to elaborate on, which it, it was... I have, some, I have some interesting parents, but then again, if you've listened to the podcast or you've watched me, you know that I've, I'm an interesting guy, and I can say that, and not feel bad or uh, like I'm tooting my own horn because I'm I've got some messed up shit in going on. You know, here I am. I've I spent like 20 minutes talking about the anxiety I get over a video game or 
that I feel like I'm surrounded by morons because they say stupid shit about the vaccines and the pandemic. I, I have no problem, you know, addressing that. And I had to have come from somewhere and my parents are almost as messed up and they say and do some crazy shit. I love them to death. And there's times where I, I hear stuff and I see them do things and I'm like, oh yeah, I am a product of my environment. But anyway, my mom, I talked to my mom and she's trying to tell me about um, a, a family that she knows that I'm supposed to know they're all dead. And I'm on the phone with them and, and she's like, did you, do you remember such and such? And I'm like, no, I have no idea who you're talking about. They're like, oh, they were good friends of ours when I, when you were a kid, we used to go over there all the time. We loved them and blah, blah, blah. And she's explaining this to me. And I'm like, I don't, I don't remember these people at all. Like, I mean, we're talking, you know, 40 years ago, but I don't remember them. And it, apparently my mom reconnected with them through Facebook or whatever, but over the course of a two week period, like four members of the family died all in their house. And it it's like heart attack and COVID related and everything. And it's like, all of them have the different things. And she's telling me all this. She's like, it's so tragic. And I'm like, that's not fucking tragic. That's there's just something wrong with that house. And my dad's in the background. He's like, I think we should investigate the house because he's obsessed with like that, you know, like ghost hunting series and stuff. He's like, all oh, these people died. The the We need to get over there with some REM pods and shit. You know, and he's he's like almost, he's 70 years old and he's wanting to investigate this house of their friends who've all died in it. And I'm going, no, they have like a carbon monoxide leak or something. <laughs> these people just keep dying in their sleep. And again, like the anxiety of me, like how are people this stupid? How do how does how do you, the police not show up and be like, this is the third person that's died here in four weeks? There's something wrong with this house, not like paranormal, but there's something scientifically wrong with this house. And I'm going, Mom, do not go over to these people's house. Oh, we have a card party there on Wednesday night. Like my dad's like, I'm coming over and I'm gonna investigate. I'll have a tape recorder. I'll be like, is there anyone here in this home? This is the conversation. This is the kind of shit that I have, uh, you know, phone calls with my parents. And it's it's always my mom on the phone and my dad in the background just spouting crazy shit. So the, the whole point I made this phone call was uh, what, you know, what can I get you guys for Christmas? Like We're coming up on Christmas. I need some Christmas ideas. And I'm talking to my mother again. And my dad's in the background. And she's she's like, hey, what do you want for Christmas? <laughs> He's like, I want a dog. She's like, you're not getting a dog. I'm not. No one wants to buy you a dog. You, you don't take care of it. You're not going to take care of a dog. He's like, I just want a dog. Now I have to elaborate that my dad and I'm obsessed with animals. I could go on and on about my dogs over the years. I love my dogs. I I grew up with animals. My dad's a massive dog lover. I've been a dog lover my whole life. That's it. Just dogs. I've never really been into any other like cuddly animals. We've always had like frogs and turtles and that kind of shit, but never, I've, I've never had a cat ever. My sister had a cat. My sister likes cats, but my, my dad and I know we're not cat people. I fucking hate cats. I, I don't trust people who like cats. I just, I don't like, they're not animals. They're not pets. They're like cheating husbands that someone have horrible. If you have an animal that you can, that you have to let out, and they only let him come back when he wants to come back and he's just to feed him. That's not a pet. Okay, that's an abusive boyfriend. That's that's what they are. Like that it's you know, there's the offspring song about low self esteem, you know, about the girl who just you know, she shows up and she does that's a cat. That's a song about a guy who has a cat. Um this so we've never been into to just dogs, just dogs. My dad loves dogs, and their dog died. Uh, well, they put it down three years ago, three, four years ago. My dad wants another dog. My mom's bitching because she always took care of the dog. My dad didn't do anything. In my mom's defense, she's 100% correct. My dad did very little. It's not like he was you know, taking the dog out. He didn't get up in the middle of the night to handle the dog. And my mom, for the most part, did and does everything with these animals, so she's like, I don't want, I don't want, you know, an animal because that's what I'm gonna have to deal with. 
So I'm not, I'm not upset that he wants a dog and that my mom doesn't want to get one, but it is a source of entertainment. So last year, my dad begged for a dog for Christmas and my mother got him a stuffed animal dog with batteries in it that like the back end goes up and down like it's asleep and it, it's real tiny and she gave it to him for Christmas as a joke. And I think my dad, out of being stubborn, he was like, thank you, thank you, thank you. He made this big deal out of it and he carried it with him for months and it still sits next to his recliner and like he'll go and sit down in the recliner and he picks that dog up and puts it on his stomach. Like he's right laid back in the recliner and he pets the, the stuffed animal. And I think he does it because he's so, it's just his tiny little fuck you to my mom. Like, oh yeah, well you think this is, was a joke. Well, I'm going to make you look stupid by loving this stuffed animal. So there's some weird shit that's going on with them on top of everything. So my dad asked for an, a dog and my dad has, uh, he's, 70 years old. He's had all of these problems. He can't drive anymore. He's blind in one eye. He's, he's losing sight in the other. So he's not allowed behind the wheel. He can still see, but it's not, he's not legally blind, but he's, he's close to the point where he can be deemed legally blind. And my mom's like, we're going to buy you a cat <laughs> for Christmas. And he's like, I don't want a cat. She's like, you couldn't tell anyway. Well, <laughs> she's like, you're damn near deaf as it is. You can't see shit. We're getting you a cat for Christmas. You'll pet it and you'll love it and you'll never know the difference. And he's like, I'll hear it meow. She's like, you can't hear shit. So my mom, as a joke, was like, we're getting you a cat. So then she gets back on the phone with me and she's like conspiratorial. And she's like, I'm being serious. I'm like, what do you mean you're being serious? She's like, I, I think your sister is getting him a cat. And I told her it was okay. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? He hates cats. She's like, he'll never know. So there is a thing going on right now where I believe my sister, my younger sister, and my mother are attempting to give my dad a cat for Christmas, and they're telling him it is a dog because his eyesight is that bad and his hearing is that bad, and as long as it moves and it's furry, they think he's going to be okay. I am not on board with this at all. I'm like, I'm not going to be a part of this. I, I, they're like, you can't tell him if we like, they're serious. They're, they're considering doing this. And I, I was so against it that they've stopped talking to me about it. And I have a feeling that we're going to show up at my parents on Christmas and he's going to be talking about his new dog and it's going to be a fucking kitten. That's, that's how crazy my family is. But anyway, we're, we're talking about this and I'm trying to th come up with uh, some other ideas, you know, for, for my mom and dad. And, you know, she's like, you're not getting a dog. You're not getting a dog. What else do you want? What else do you want? So he, and I hear him go, I want a, I want a peace necklace. What? Did he just say he wants a peace necklace? My mom's like, what do you mean? He's like, I want a, a chain with like a peace symbol on it. My mom's like, where are you, a fucking rapper? <laughs> Wait, stop. What does he want? She's like, he wants a necklace with a peace symbol on it. Now, my dad, there's nothing about my dad that is, he's, ne he's never been like a hippie at all. He's, he's not eco-friendly. There's, there is nothing in the 70 years of life that would give any indication that he has anything to do with a peace symbol. Um, but yeah, he's, he's, he wants a necklace with peace emblem on it. And I, I can't figure out where this came from, but I work for a company that we, we, we make and design and distribute jewelry. That's like a, a small portion. It's, it's an incorporated company. We do all kinds of products. I am a product developer by trade. Um, I'm a professional inventor is what it is and, you know, develop products, you know, uh, design things. And the company I work for, one of the aspects of what we do is jewelry. So I went to the buyer and I'm like, do you have any, like, I want a necklace with a peace symbol on it and I can get it at cost. And he's like, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll get you. It's not a big deal. So we start going through this catalog and my mom with this whole thing about how are you a rapper? And 
I'm, you know, obviously I want to get him something like conservative, like a little chain and maybe a peace symbol on it, like the size of a quarter, I guess. But if they, because they're buying him this cat and they're telling him it's a dog, I've, I've decided that I'm getting him a chain, a conservative chain and a little gold peace symbol. Just, you know, not a big deal, but I am also getting him a giant like dog chain looking thing and a like four inch wide peace symbol covered in cubic zirconia, you know, all blinged out this giant ass peace symbol on a necklace. And that's what we're giving him for Christmas. Uh, just, I think family, Holidays with my family are always interesting because shit always gets weird. But uh, this this could be a very, very epic Christmas at my family. There, there. My mom is. I think I've talked about her in episodes past. She's the biggest fanatic against Trump. That's the only way I can say it. It's not like she's a very political person. She just hates Donald Trump with an absolute passion to the point where we've had issues with her stealing signs from people's yards. Uh, She cusses people out. Like in the, if she's out somewhere and she sees someone with a Trump hat on, you pretty much have to hold her down before she gets into an argument with them over nothing. And she's discovered they, my sister gave her an iPad a few years ago for Christmas. They've never really been into the computer. My dad's the only one that had an email address up to a couple of years ago. My mom just worked through him They gave her an iPad and now she's discovered Facebook and TikTok and it is awful. Like I I could go on for hours about the shit that my mother has done on there on, on the internet. And, uh, it's, there's some people that shouldn't have access to the internet. And my mother is one of them. And we, we find it entertaining because we've manipulated her through the years. And, um, like my mom's of a very, she has a lot of religion, her, she doesn't attend church, but she has a lot of faith. Let's put it that way. So like when she first got this, my sister and I convinced her that DTF, (laughs) the DTF stood for deliver the faith. And we would, we would, uh, send her messages on her iPad and we would, you know, she would say like, bless you. And we would say, ah, thanks mom. Bless you. DTF. (laughs) She's like, what does that mean? We're like, deliver the faith. So my mom started (laughs) putting, DTF on stuff like on Facebook and shit. Now I'm not on Facebook, so I didn't see it, but my sister would send me these messages like, oh God, screenshots of stuff where she would put and she's like where she would answer people, DTF, and it, it went on for months. Uh so there's there's always something interesting there at, at the family at, at Christmas. So I'm kind of excited. Hopefully in the next episode I'll have a decent amount of stories to add. And we might wait. I think I might wait to record until right after Christmas just so I can tell how all this goes down and if the cat actually becomes an issue. And the next episode will be my dad, the cat, and Game of Thrones. That's where I'm going to end it. Um, I don't know. It's been it's been a weird year. And I've had a I've I've been It's been very difficult to stay positive this year. And I had someone, um, you know, come told me they're like, are you, are you, are you trying to self-destruct? Like, is that your purpose? Like what, you know, are you, and I, I don't attempt to, I'm not trying to, but, uh, God damn, this is, it's just been, it's, you know the whole pandemic's been hard to been hard to deal with everything and it's it's been hard to find the positive side in anything for a really long time but the last year has been even worse it's been even tougher and it just seems like it's just it's all coming to a head and uh got to hope things i hope things get better here's here's hoping that 2022 sees an upswing because as a as a global community we need some positivity we need a win we need a w 
in that column for next year. So uh, thanks a lot again for hanging out. I appreciate you guys. I uh, love each and every one of you. Thanks a lot for listening. And as long as you guys keep listening, I'll keep making episodes. <laughs>